And good evening. It is Tuesday night, and that means it's time for the UD Football Show with head football coach Stan Zweifel. It is our second-to-last show. The Spartans have one more game to play in the season, and they'll do that this Saturday when they travel to Pella to take on the uh, Central College Dutch to finish out the schedule and hope to put together three straight wins to end the season. Great win uh, last Saturday in the uh, final game at Chalmers Field on Senior Day as the Spartans uh, win over Coe College 29-27. Uh, to 27. And so a good win there. We're going to talk with Coach Zweifel about that win and also size up the matchup for this Saturday as the Spartans will take on the uh, Central Dutch. A little bit unusual start time there, a 2 o'clock kickoff at uh, Pella. So we'll be on the air at 1.40 on uh, 101.1 The River and streaming on 101.1theriver.com. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, a 2 o'clock kickoff for that uh, game at Central College coming up this Saturday. So we'll come back and we'll start breaking down Saturday's win over Coe and look ahead to Central when we return. This is the UD Football Show with Stan Zweifel on 101.1 The River. And welcome back to our UD football show with head football coach Stan Zweifel. And uh, should say right out of the box here, happy Veterans Day. And thank you uh, to our veterans. And uh, Coach Zweifel is here, and he's uh, saluting the veterans uh, with his uh, cap apparel here tonight. And, uh, Coach, uh, good to have you on the program here. Thanks so much. We had a little presentation down in our uh, indoor facility, our veterans training memorial facility down there today with the veterans. And a couple of veterans gave some uh, very inspirational speeches. And uh, Joe came in to kind of dedicate it and uh, President Bullock was there so it's a really uh, good day that way and of course it and you talk about the weather today Tim how cold it is outside and what it would be very miserable to practice outside how lucky and fortunate we are that we have that indoor facility that we can get a chance to practice at a very high tempo and very close to game speed and not put your uh, players really out in the whole harm's way and that is sometimes in this kind of weather uh, people have stand and get cold, just a lot of things. So I'm very, very fortunate. Our team's very fortunate. Our school's very fortunate to have that. Yeah, and this uh, campus uh, loves our veterans. Yes, uh, they I really mean, do. They named the uh, Veterans Memorial Training Center, and uh, everywhere you go, you uh, you see that on campus here, and it's uh, certainly great. Yeah, the ROTC that's on program is in our building over there, and uh, we have a really good relationship with Colonel Camiller, who's the head of the ROTC here, and they've done a really nice job. And it's just a a good day for us to reflect on all the things that the uh, military, the veterans have done for us present and past and future. And then I think about the way of life, how we can uh, actually earn a living uh, yep. coaching a game is pretty dang important and pretty dang nice. Yeah, no doubt. Well said. Well, the Spartans are in a hard-fought victory this past uh, Saturday against Coe College. We're going to talk about that first 29-27 uh, victory. And so, uh, you know, uh, three wins out of four against a, a very fine co-program, and that's uh, cer certainly something you can hang your cap on. Yeah, Tim, you know, we talked about this. It's been six years now since we've been here. We talked about the teams that we really want to put ourselves in the same situation. It would be Co Central, and Warburg. And in the last four years, we've been 3-1 and one against Central, or excuse me, against uh, Co. And if we went on Saturday against Central, we'd be 3-1 and one in the last four years against them. And so we're putting ourselves in the position where the teams that have been the really the, the main programs in this conference for a, a long time, trying to put ourselves in that same position that we can compete with them favorably on the field. And, of course, that will help us compete with them favorably off the field in recruiting. But what a great game. And all our games with Coe, as you and I talked last week, Coe is really a big rival of mine. It really is. It's a, a, a school that's very close in proximity and have great success but also they really recruit Iowa very hard and then the same part of Iowa that we recruit. So it's been some really good games. You know, back in 2012, we lost to them in double overtime in a game that was eerily similar to this past Saturday as they were driving down to score that touchdown to put them within two points, and we prevented that two-point conversion to win the, really put us to win the game. You know, if you remember two years ago, they did the exact same thing, drove down and scored a two-point conversion to put the game in, uh, tie and then won it in double overtime. So I was, that was flashing in my mind on that <laughs> as that thing took place. But here's what I said, Tim, and I will say this: the, what I was so very proud of our team was it was a really a team win. The special teams got us points. Curtis Prawl was outstanding. He's been outstanding all year long. Uh, he's done a tremendous job in kicking in very difficult wind conditions. He's nine for nine 
in field goals. We blocked a punt, and that two points ends up being the difference in the game, forced them to go for two points instead of a kick. We pressured a lot of their punts. They did not punt very well. We had decent field position on our kickoff returns, and our kickoff coverage leads the conference in kickoff coverage. So that part really played an important role in that win. Then our defense got a ton of takeaways for us, put us in positions. We scored just enough to win. I don't think we played as clean again as we've talked about, Tim, in the past, but we ran the ball. Our Alex Ardvantakis, our starting running back, gets knocked out. Probably in about the seventh play of our first offensive series, Davon Vance Jenkins, a true freshman. Alec is a true freshman. Davon Vance Jenkins from Janesville Parker in Janesville, Wisconsin. Kid were really high on who came in at back and got a concussion in our fall camp. So he's been kind of catching up with us. He's been our third tailback, but he comes in and rushes for over 150 yards and plays extremely well. So all those things taking place really allowed us to have a great team win. And you know, our two biggest offensive weapons so far this year, Chris Bagley and Tyler Rutenbeck, did not have big games. They did a really nice job of rolling down their coverage to both those receivers, playing people over the top of them, playing a coverage that was very good on coverage, but not very good in run support. And I think that really we took advantage of that part of their coverage. And then Tyler Dobratz, who had missed seven weeks for us, comes back in and just has a terrific game plays the most amount of snaps that he's ever played in a game for us in his four years here and makes a big touchdown catch for us. So when you get contributions from a lot of different areas of your football team, you get contributions from some of your backups or guys that have been injured and not played regularly, you got to really feel good about that win. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, You know, takeaways, you talked about them being important, and it's what you do with those takeaways. You turn two of those four turnovers into touchdowns. Yeah, you know, we scored 17 points off of turnovers, And then, Tim, I think what also, if you look in the red zone, we've been very effective this year. I think we're leading the conference in red zone. We haven't been there enough, Tim. That's been one of the things, I think, shortcomings of our offensive football team. But when we get there, we usually come up with some kind of points. And then, again, I think one of the biggest things that happens in those kind of games where it's going to be very close is, you know, Oscar White gets a couple picks. Darren Miles gets a pick. We're kind of pressuring the quarterback. I don't know if we got any sacks, but we pressured him. But everything put together, everybody contributed in some form or fashion. And when you get a lot of aspects of your team contributing, you usually have a chance to have a win. Coach took a 14-10 to 10 lead into the locker room uh, shortly after you kicked a uh, field goal to uh, get within range. And for the second straight week, uh, you guys really came out in the second half. And, I mean, that, uh, what was it, two-minute, three-minute yes. time span really yes. changed the course of that ball game where you got a touchdown off of a turnover and then, then got the safety on the block yeah. punt. You know, we had talked about, Tim, and we always do have some kind of plan coming out at halftime. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out the way that plan is. <laughs> is put together, but we executed that. But we had waited for the right time. We had worked on that punt block, and we had seen another team do it against them, and they had missed that punt block, but we saw they had a little bit of a weakness in their shield, and we took advantage of them. We held on to it to the right time. We were going to call it just before half, but we decided not to, and then we did it on their first punt, and it was really in a great location. And you know what? Our guy on the edge who's supposed to pick up that f- block punt that's part of our plan he was being held and the ball rolled out of the back of the end zone we really thought we probably should have got a touchdown out of that but Tim as you mentioned it created some energy and excitement on our field and I'm talking about not only the guys playing but the sidelines was as probably energized as they have been all year and you always want your sidelines to be actively involved the hard thing is you got to do something to get them actively (laughs) involved And those two big plays really got our kids excited on that. And then, you know, at the end, uh, we we hang on because they have a play and Blaine Snitger, uh, you know, knocks away that two-point pass, that two-point conversion pass, and allows us to win the game. Yeah. Uh, Co, as you uh, point out, uh, backing up there, they they pulled within a touchdown there to start the fourth quarter. And then you mentioned Curtis Prawls, big field goals. I mean, that that second one, swirling wind conditions, and that was important because that put you up buy enough to force them to go for two if they did score on you, which they eventually did, and then you knock the two-point conversion away. Yeah, really interesting. Curtis and I had discussed in pregame how far can you kick it for this way and how far can you kick it from the other way. And when we got down there, 
you know, I got pretty conservative in those last two plays. I ran it on third and three, and I think in third and five, or second and five, excuse me, and I had talked to Curtis, and he said he could get it in exactly where we're at, and I knew that score would really put some stress on them, and we opted for the for the field goal. And, you know, we did that uh, two weeks ago against Buena Vista and put us up, which should have won us the football game. You know, he's just been – he just been lights out kicking the ball, and he's had some really tough days here. As we mentioned earlier, the wind usually here is blowing one way or another. In Saturdays, it was a crosswind coming out of the north, and he kicked it right between the uprights. So just really excited about the good job. And I'll say this to you. The snap was a little low. It took a really short hop on our mm-hmm. holder, Cayman Martins. And he's our backup punter, but he's our holder, and he did a great job of feeling that punt. That was just another thing about everybody contributing uh, to our victory, and I think that really makes you feel good as a coach when all aspects of the team contribute. So you climbed the ladder above Coe. You got into fourth place in the Iowa Conference standings, sitting at 3-3, three and three, and you're 4-5 and five on the season. Anything else about that win Saturday as you reflect back on it? You know what? It, we've had some really close games this year, but when haven't we in the last three years, yeah. Tim? I mean, it's just been – we can go back from 2012 and take probably eight of our 10 losses, and it has come down the last 30 seconds of the game. Nice to win that 30 last 30 seconds, then have come up short by one or two or three points. We're still learning in that part. I, I really, I really tell the guys, and I told the guys afterward, I was so proud of them that they hung in there because it's been a tough season. Uh, Tim, probably tougher than I can ever explain to anybody about how hard it's been on our coaching staff and our players with our expectation level that we've had. Here's the good news. We win on Saturday. It's our fourth consecutive winning season in the Iowa Conference. I don't know last time that's been done, Tim, but you were looking at some records. It's yeah, been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been quite a while. Secondly, it would put us 3-1 and one against Central College. I don't know when the last time we won at Central, but it's been a while also. And I tell our guys all the time, those are the types of things you have to do if you're going to be a successful program continuously. Now, we've got a chance to go 3-1 and one against Central if we win. They're a good football team. I think they feel they're playing for a national playoff berth. Good for them. They've had a heck of a year. They have improved immensely offensively, Tim, and we'll talk about that mm-hmm. in the next segment, but they're a much improved football team. But when you look about where we started, we can still salvage, and I mean that sincerely, salvage some kind of good feelings about our season. But more importantly, three wins in a row coming out in conference play, and it actually would have been five if we beaten Buena Vista and not had that, you know, that loss we had in the last 16, 17 seconds in that game. So there are good things to build on. Boy, will it be tough. It's going to be a tough game. Central is so good at home. Mm-hmm. They're over 90%, I think, in home over the last 10 years. They don't get beat often at home. So that's a heck of a challenge for us, and we'll see how that thing's going to shake down. Spartans will head to Pella to take on the Central College Dutch. Uh, Coach Sweefel and I will be back to talk more about that. Also, Trevor Stotter, outstanding linebacker for the Spartans uh, this season and over his career. He's going to Join us a little bit later to talk about his thoughts on the season and his career here at UD. When we return, this is the UD Football Show with Stan Zwiefel. Back after this on 101.1 The River. Back on Tuesday night, this is the UD Football Show with Stan Zwiefel here on 101.1 The River. Second to last uh, UD Football Show. We'll size up the season. And what the Spartans are hoping will be a victory we'll talk about uh, next Tuesday night. Uh, but as Coach uh, said, it's going to be a tough road to hoe as the Spartans travel to Pella to take on the uh, Central College Dutch. That's a 2 o'clock kickoff, 140 with our pregame coverage here on uh, 101.1 The River. And uh, Central really has been on a roll, as we talked a little bit about uh, in, our, in our last break. Uh, they won five straight uh, after that loss to Wartburg. And uh, like you said, they're, they're playing this game like it's uh, for a national playoff spot. Yeah, they really are. They've been very, very good offensively, much improved over last year offensively, throwing the ball more than they have in the past, throwing a real, getting the ball out of the quarterback's hand, a lot of quick game. and. Uh, packed in in their protection so we'd like to get them out of normal down and distance that's when they've had the most difficulty when they're not normal down distance they had a heck of a game last week with Buena Vista over at Buena Vista 32-25 and one on the interception at the five yard line to end the game it's going to be a very very competitive game I don't think either team's going to be going in there and and and, uh, running away with this game I think we match up well with them 
Their strength is in their secondary. They return three out of four starters in the secondary and two out of their four linebackers. Their defensive line is completely graduated from last year, and that was a damn good defensive line they had last year. Offensively, they got a lot of veterans back, and as I said, they're really, I think, dealing into the strengths of trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hand, doing some play-action pass, and really trying to run the ball they possibly can to keep things balanced in their attack. They play with great pride down there. They have tremendous tradition, as you know, Tim. When Coach Skipper was there, they were in national playoffs, I don't know, 15 out of 20 years and won a national championship, and I don't know how many conference championships they've won a lot. And they're a very proud, proud tradition, a very proud school. And so that'll be a really challenge for us, as I said. But, you know, again, I'm, you know, Tim, we've played him about as good as anybody's played him in the league the last three years. And I think I don't have any reason to doubt that we won't play him good when we go down there. I would tell you this, Tim, there's going to be some real keys to this game. First of all, they don't turn it over very much, and they're – uh, secondary is tremendous at taking away interception. I think I saw the turnover margin is plus ten, yeah, uh, and that leads the conference plus six in conference play. So yeah, they really do well. Tremendous in taking the ball away, and their safeties, who are both three-year starters, are very aggressive and they take chances. They take a tremendous amount of chances on the underneath and short passes. Thus, they get some turnovers. They really play hard. They, you know, they rally to the football line defense, and as I mentioned, offensively, they really try to make it error-free. So we're going to have to match that part of it. Now, we've always done very well against them offensively, and I don't know if this Saturday should be any different. Then, of course, in a game where you're going to have some cold, can you keep the game close so you, know, you don't lose interest? And I'm sincere about that, Tim, because in these kind of games where it's very, very cold, you got to play tough every single snap, and that's going to be a real challenge mentally to us but I'm really excited about going down there and trying to extend our win streak to three and I'm really excited about going down there and trying to get three and one against Central in the last four years that's an extremely motivating factor for me and for our football team too. Mm -hmm. They're uh, rushing attack they're led by uh, Josh Osborne he's a 1,000 yard rusher yep. and a lot of carries to 209 yards uh, but uh, I mean that as we talked about with uh, Buena Vista, trying to yes. make them one-dimensional is what you'll yeah. try to do. He's an interesting back. He's not as physical as the kid from Buena Vista and not as fast as some of the other guys, the Warper guys per se, but he's got a really nice mix. He's got some physicalness, he's got some shake, and he's got some speed. I think he's the most complete back of the backs that we've faced so far, and so a big compliment to him. And they have featured him. Boy, he's carried the ball almost 30 times a game. So we expect him to try to pound up inside with him, run some play-action pass, and run some quick game. And, again, I, I, Tim, I think one of the keys to that game is try to get them out of being second and five, second and six, third and three, third and two. Their percentage of being successful on third and greater than six is significantly less than when they're in a third and three or a third and four situation. Offensively, um, Coe really was able to limit your pass game. Yes. It's going to be pretty important to uh, try to try to hone that up a little bit. Well, if, they, if Central plays what Coe played, then you're going to expect us to get another 150-yard rusher, let me tell you that, <laughs> because Coe played uh, really five of their secondary guys dedicated to stopping the perimeter and over the top, and we chose to run the ball and throw it underneath, and I thought we had great success with that. So... Uh, I think in any type of game, you got to if somebody's going to do something to take something away, they mm -hmm. got to give something up in another part. I do hope that Chris and uh, Rudy both become really more active with a lot more catches on Saturday. But we'll see how they choose to defend us, and uh, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. um, down at Central, they do have such tradition. How much of overcoming that is it for teams? I mean, you've had success, but yeah. uh, certainly playing down there, that, that there's something to say about that. Well, you know, Tim, two years ago, or maybe it's, yeah, I guess it is. We threw for 500 yards and lost the dang game with a 99-yard <laughs> interception left. With I a remember minute, that. minute and seven seconds left in the game. I think I dream about that probably <laughs> six, seven times a week. <laughs> I, I t it, it is hard, Tim. It, it, they are good, and they do have that tradition to fall back on. But I would tell you that most of our players that have been with us, hey, we've beat them two out of three times. You follow me? So I don't know if that is as much – working on them as it might be me as I know the tradition and the record that they've had in the past. But you know what I always tell you, last year's got nothing to do with this year and last week's got nothing to do with this week. 
how we practice today, how we practice tomorrow, how we practice Thursday, and how we practice Friday will be a big factor in how we'll play on Saturday. Of course, you've had just one practice uh, yep. this week, and uh, you had a few injuries to deal with yeah. uh, after that ball game on Saturday. So what, uh, what do you anticipate there? You know, there? this is the most healthy we've been, with the exception of Al's got a, a, a shoulder sprain, an AC sprain, and he should be ready to go. He's been cleared by our doctors and our training staff to practice, and we put him in a red jersey today, and we'll keep him in a red jersey tomorrow, just not to take any hits on that shoulder, no reason to do so. And we think we'll be at full strength on Saturday. And so, you know, that's the way it should be, I think, in the last game. You're going to play everybody you possibly can that can help you to win. And as I mentioned, it, that the, the weather will be a factor. It'll be a factor how people react to it mentally. Any final thoughts on uh, this game as you prepare for the Central College Dutch and to end the season on Saturday? I would say to all the veterans, thank you yeah. so very, very much. Uh, I, I don't know if, if, if words can express how grateful uh, I am and our football staff and our football team about what you do, and I know it's hard sometimes to give the thanks proper to you. We sure appreciate everything that you've done for us. I can't wait to play Central. That's a, one of our three games that we want to have a rival with us. We want to be able to compete with them on the field and off the field. We want to go down there and play our best game of the season is what I'm planning us doing, Tim. Coach, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Saturday at uh, Pella. Again, a pregame on the river at 140, 2 o'clock kickoff. And so thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you on Saturday. You bet, Tim. Make sure you wear your stocking caps. <laughs> I will. They don't have the heated press box like we don't. enjoy here at uh, Chalmers Field. So, yeah, I'm, I've got the long johns <laughs> ready to go and everything to try to keep from shivering on the broadcast. Absolutely. That's, we'll be ready. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to talk uh, with Trevor Stotter, a linebacker for the University of Dubuque Spartan football team, as our UD football show with – Stan Zweifel gets into our third segment right after this on 101.1 The River. We're back on this Tuesday night. This is the UD Football Show with uh, Stan Zweifel, and we're going to talk with uh, one of the Spartans that uh, has had a great season, uh, Trevor Stoddard in his junior season uh, with the Spartans, uh, the leading tackler right now in the Iowa Conference uh, as a junior. And, uh, Trevor, it's great to have you on the program tonight. Thanks for stopping by. It's good to be here. Well, let's uh, talk about the Spartan season. I know uh, win-wise you guys would like to have things uh, go a little bit differently, but, uh, you know, you could finish with that third straight win uh, on the season, and that's what you guys are focused on right now. Uh, talk about the team's thoughts on that. All right. Uh, we have had, you know, a slightly un unfortunate season in some ways. You know, it's been a little bit hard on us, but like you said, it's a big opportunity uh, this last game to really pick up. Um, our season in a whole and get these last three wins, and that'll be good for us, you know, moving into next season as well. So, mm -hmm. Defensively, the linebacker play has been uh, solid all year long, but it seems like over the last three games you guys have uh, made some really big plays. Uh, yourself and Blaine and uh, and Everett Schweer uh, have really been hawking around the balls. Uh, have you guys picked up your aggressiveness a little bit more, you think, over the last three games? Or uh, Right. I think, you know, uh, we've been able to just play play faster um, and play faster as a defense, and I think that's helped our success a little bit. Um, despite you know mistakes that we might make and things like that, we've been able to be in the right places. You know, um, our defense as a whole playing slightly more uh, relentless than we have in the past. So we've been able to make a couple more plays here and there, just kind of arriving in the right spot, things like that. So it's talk good. talk about how you play faster as a defense. What allows you to do that? Uh, really, you know, it's it's come down to a lot uh, preparation. Um, that's a big thing. Uh, practice, you know, uh, Monday preparing, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, really get on the field. And then Friday a day for us to recoup, you know, get our, our heads ready to go. Um, and then, you know, I think as our season has been slightly less fortunate, you know, a couple negative things, a couple bumps down the road, I think it's kind of drive drove us, you know, to do a little better and work harder, things like that, you know, um, make change when we were called to make change. So that's been something big, too. Well, uh, like I said, this could be the third win in a row. The, the last uh, two victories uh, have been uh, solid performances, good win over Coe, and then uh, outstanding win the week before that. And uh, you guys feel like you're playing with more confidence right now after winning those two ball games? Yeah, I do. I think uh, those two wins were a big confidence builder. Um, I think going into this third game, it's going to be really important to stay humble, though. Um, their offense is, I think, averaging about 35 points a game. Um, so that'll be a big challenge for us as a defense to really hone in and, and play well because we will need to play well to win. Coach Sweefel talked about Central a little bit, but what are some of the keys that you guys are really focusing on defensively that you uh, 
really have to play? I think one big thing is the run. They really like to pack it in there tight and, you know, hit you hard with that. So it's going to be important for even our DBs, you know, to come downhill, play fast, or linebackers to play fast, things like that, um, where we still hone in on the pass, you know, and lock that down. But um, a big thing is going to be to run to try to get them out of that, you know, comfort zone or just sticking the ball down your throat kind of thing. So Hard to believe, last game of the season. This will be uh, your third year as a Spartan. Uh, time's probably flown for you. Right, yeah, it's one very fast. Uh, you, can, you know, you kind of learn over the years how fast it's going, so it's going to be – um, a big last game for me and a big game that will, you know, bring the team to a positive level moving into the next season. Of course, you want to get a win for those seniors in their final ball game. But like you said, uh, there's a lot of underclassmen coming back. And uh, to end the season with a victory, no matter what kind of year you've had, that really helps you get into the weight room a little bit more and uh, prepare for the second season or the season next year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, anything else you want to add about uh, the defense this year, Trevor? It's uh, really been uh, great having you on the program. Uh, Anything else you want to add? Shout out to anybody, whatever you want to say. Uh, just a shout out to all my teammates, shout out to our seniors. You know, let's go get that win for them this Saturday and uh, play well, and, and hopefully we'll come home with a victory at their place, which has not been done in a very long time. So Eons. I think uh, before yeah. I was born, that was a while ago for sure, and probably Coach Sweefel. <laughs> I don't know if it's that far back. But uh, anyway, thanks for coming up, and uh, good luck to you guys on Saturday. Sounds good. Trevor Stoddard, a linebacker for the University of Dubuque Spartan football team. And that's going to wrap up our show for this evening from uh, Chalmers Field tonight. We've got one more UD football show next Tuesday night at uh, 630. And, of course, the final game of the season this Saturday, the Spartans lock horns with the Central Dutch coming up pregame at 140 and the kickoff at 2 o'clock. So thanks a lot uh, for tuning in. Again, thank you to all the veterans and have a great evening. I'm Tim Larry for the UD Football Show on 101.1 The River.